A naturalist to me is noticing patterns and relationships in nature. It's listening to what's around you, it's making observations, and sometimes it can look like recording that data as well. Naturalist is someone who is aware of the natural environment and the interactions between the organisms within it. Beauty is what keeps me connected to nature. I think that all of our senses are meant to appreciate beauty. Beauty is everywhere. And beauty leads to wonder and inspiration. And we all know that the world needs more of that. A naturalist is someone who studies nature, which is all around us. That includes animals and plants and the environment. And does a naturalist have to be a scientist? Definitely not. A naturalist can be someone who's sitting at home, like you are, and observing the, the natural world, the seasonal changes from your window or from your backyard, and it's easy to do. So to me, a naturalist is anyone who likes to go outdoors, who likes to listen to the sounds of nature, likes to check out their own local trails, and also journal about what they're seeing. An important part of being a naturalist is keeping a nature journal where you can document your observations. All you need is a piece of paper, a pencil, a piece of cardboard, and string. So to get started, we're going to lay out all of our materials. We're going to first make our book cover out of some paper. So I'm going to fold a sheet of paper in half till I measure out how much cardboard I need. I'm outlining it with a pencil so I know where to cut and folding it in half so I can have a back for my book as well. I'm going to cut this out, which can be a little tricky because cardboard is pretty thick. I'm going to cut them into two halves so I have one for the front and one for the back. The next thing I'm going to do is create the paper for the inside. I'm folding my construction paper in half and putting the cover and the back on. The next thing I'm going to do is take a sharp pencil and create the holes for the spine of my book. This will be for the string we'll thread through and this is what's going to bind our nature journal together. I'm going to cut the string into three pieces and thread it through the hole making sure that it's going through the paper as well. And just finishing with a knot. You don't have to use string for this. You can use ribbon or anything else that you have laying around too. Maybe an old shoelace that you don't need anymore. All right, so our book is bound. And the very last thing we need to do is create a beautiful cover for our nature journal. Mine's gonna say that it's my nature journal in three beautiful shades of green. And then I'm gonna draw something nature related and get my two friends to help me out. And it's as simple as that. You can make as many books as you want. For the purpose of today, we're going to be recording our observations in nature, and I can't wait. When nature journaling, it is important that you always record in your journal your name, date, location, and weather. By documenting these details, you can accurately depict your observations and share them with others over time. If someone were to open your nature journal a hundred years from now, they will be able to tell who observed, what time of year it was, and what the weather was like. Let's go on a nature walk for some inspiration. Come on!
On our nature walk, we found a burdock seed and we decided to document our observations about it. Katie started by drawing the stalk and the stem that the seed was originally attached to. She also drew the seed and she included details that showed how pokey and sticky the seed was. Katie labeled the different parts of her drawing, but it's totally okay if you don't know the name of what you're observing. You can use descriptive words to label instead, like sticky seed, crunchy leaf, or blue flower. Let's travel to Wenatchee to see what Elisa observed outside. I'm gonna write in whatever observations I can make. The bird I notice has a yellow beak, an orange belly, and a gray back. Now we'll show you a fun way to document the sounds you hear in your nature journal. Today by doing a sound map. A sound map is also going to begin with the date, time, and location of where you are. And a sound map is gonna be only using your ears. You're gonna start with the fist at zero. And every time you hear one noise, you're gonna put one finger up for every noise. And we'll do this for about 30 seconds, starting now. That's about 30 seconds. I counted about six different sounds. Elisa then documented the sounds she observed in her nature journal. Now it's your turn to nature journal. Share a picture of your nature journal on our Google Classroom or by tagging us on social media.